All right, we're back with the 2006 Yamaha YFC 450. So last video, we got this thing running pretty good, but it ended up smoking pretty good. So um, we had to tear it all back down again. And um, it turns out that the piston ring was stuck right here. So this ring right here, I tried to get it unstuck, but um, it's really, really tight in there. And when I took it, first took it off, it was completely stuck. So piston rings were stuck. The top, the two top ones were stuck. The oil ring was not stuck, if I remember correctly. So um, that was causing lower compression and then also causing oil to go by the rings and uh, smoke. Then we also found that there is a leak in one of the valves as well. So the two exhaust valves were leaking. So when I put brake cleaner right in here, you can see it come through down in here. And that means that it's not sealing properly right there. So we're gonna have to take these two valves out and then just clean those up and then put those back in because they look good otherwise. Then we're gonna replace the valve seals as well. And then we'll make sure that's not the cause of the the smokiness either. So lots of stuff to do today. So the cylinder looked really good. No scratches on the cylinder here at all. Um, we're just gonna take a green uh, pad and clean that up because you're really not supposed to hone these out because they can take off the Nicacel coating that's on it. So um, we're just gonna scratch that up with the green pad and that should make the ring seat with the new piston and rings, I would think. That's what I looked up online. Some people hone them, but I feel like that's a little bit risky. We're just going to scratch it up with the green pad really well. And uh, if that doesn't work, we can always tear it back down and uh, do it again. But I th I'd rather do that than wreck the cylinder. But we got a brand new piston for it. Pro X we went with this time. I've been hearing bad things about Wyskill, so I decided to go with Pro X this time. Um, this is for Yamaha YFZ. It's a 94.97 millimeter standard piston. And here's what that looks like. All the rings. Here's the piston. Looks pretty nice. Let's see if that fits in there. Hopefully it does. That's pretty tight in there. That is gonna be some high compression, I bet. <laughs> Why is that so tight in there? Well, hopefully that works. <laughs> it's the correct size, standard piston. That just feels pretty tight. Uh, maybe not. We'll see it going this way here. This is the way it's supposed to go. Oh, it's not too tight. There's a little gap in there. I might measure that clearance here quick. All right, I just want to make sure the clearance is going to be enough. We're just going to take a feeler gauge and go in on the side of it all around and just see what that clearance is. Um, you know, just to make sure. It should be a fairly small clearance. So let's just kind of see here if our feeler gauge fits in. I mean that fits in and that's a, yeah that should be fine I would think. So we're, we've got uh, 0 .003 inches, that's a nice tight fit, and then 0 .076 millimeters. So I'm going to quick look that up and see if that's enough clearance for the sun. All right, looked it up on Pro X and it said with a dirt bike that's 450cc, um, clearance needs to be between 0 0.03 millimeters and 0 0.05 millimeters, or 0 0.002 inches. So we're at 0 0.003 inches, which is fine. Um, so this piston is the C version. It comes in A and B. Um, so this is for like a worn out cylinder. And I didn't know that before I ordered it. So it's gonna be like 0 0.0. 0 0.02 millimeters bigger than the standard, I believe. So that's fine. Um, 
that clearance is fine. We'll measure the ring gap next, just to make sure that's good. All right, so for the piston gap, um, Pro-X recommends that uh, the ring gap is 0 0.4 to 0.5% of the piston size. So right now the piston size is 94.97. So we multiply that by 0.4% and we got 0.379 millimeters. So that's what the clearance needs to be. And then we can actually change this to 5% as well. I think that's the upper range. And it's 0.47. So between 0.47 and um, 0.37. So we'll get the feeler gauge out. Let's see here. So like right here is between that mark. 0.432, so that's between 0.37 and 0.47. So we'll get that out and then we'll measure the piston rings here. As you can see here, the two main rings. Kind of stuck together here. The black one's a little bit thinner. Well, there's an R at the top, so that means it's up. So the R means that's the upside of the ring. I believe this one has one too. Let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is. So this is the upside of this ring, because the R is right over here. All right. So let's measure the ring gap here. We'll stuff these down in there with the our side up here. Let's see what the ring gap is. Push those down. And let's see here. It's going to be smaller than that. Alright, so we're at 0.229 for that ring, and we should be at 0.379, so that ring needs to be filed down. We'll see if it makes a difference in the top part of the cylinder, but I don't think it will. Yeah, that's pretty... It's a pretty small gap. Yep, same. So that's 0.229. So that needs to be filed down for sure. Just a tad. Let's see what the other ring is. It'll probably be the same. This one might be a little bit bigger. 381, let's try it. Yeah. That one fits right in there. You can see it right there. And this one fits right in there. So that's 0.381, so we're in spec there. I'm going to flip this around and just see if it's the same in the bottom part of the cylinder, just to make sure. Because again, we don't want to blow this thing up. And we'll see. Yep. It's the same thing. Fits right in there. So that ring is in spec, the other one's a little bit big. Alright, we took a little bit off of this and then we deburred it all and um, 
Now, let's see. Oop. Fits right in. So it's tight, but fits in there. So that is 0 0.381, so it's a little bit bigger than what the lowest setting should be. All right, we've got the rings on the piston. Top ring is going to be the lighter ring. And there's a little R facing up. So that means the ring goes to that position. Um, and then the darker ring is the middle ring. You can see it's a little bit darker. It's like black colored. And then obviously the oil rings are easy to put in. Um, those are just standard. But uh, what you want to do is kind of stagger these rings so that they don't uh, line up where the ring gap is. So you want one ring gap right in the front. I guess the arrow is pointing towards the exhaust. So one ring gap right here. And then another one like 180 away from that one. So you want the black one. Where is that guy? So we'll move that to right here. Then the oil ring, um, you want to just stagger those. It doesn't really matter where they are. Just line them up with another gap and you should be fine. But yeah, stagger those. Otherwise your quad's going to smoke. Okay, because this is a Nicacel cylinder, you can see the cross hatches are, are kind of already in there. And uh, this is really hard material. So what we want to do is just kind of deglaze it um, so that the piston rings can um, seat in there. So what we're going to do to deglaze this thing is just take a scotch Bright pad, 3M scotch Bright pad, and some WD-40. So we're just going to cover that with WD-40, take the scotch Bright pad, and just scuff it up a bit just so that we can deglaze it a bit before putting the new piston in. It's going to take this, go around it. Some people use a diamond hone to uh, scuff this up, but I don't have one, so this will have to do. But yeah, basically just deglazing it, and uh, that'll be enough to get those rings to seat properly. So we'll do this, and then we'll install this. All right, so it looked like these were missing the dowel pins that go right here. So I found two other ones from a different YFZ that uh, had a parts cylinder. So I robbed them off of here. But yeah, completely missing those dowel pins. So it's a good thing we uh, checked that. All right, let's get the piston on. So the arrow points towards the exhaust. Arrow right there. All right, let's see if we can get the cylinder on next. All right, let's work on the head here a little bit. Right, we've got the valve compressor on here, just compressing this first exhaust valve. You can see the pin's going to come out right there. It should come out. Alright, two pins came out. Now we can get this valve out and see what that seat looks like. Hopefully it's not wrecked. We'll push the valve out. Take the spring off there.
You can see all the carbon built up on the valve. And you see how dirty that is. So little pieces of carbon can get in between there. And uh, then it doesn't make a tight seal. See, you can see all the carbon in there. Seat doesn't look too bad, but we'll clean that up with a wire wheel. And now uh, that will be good as new. But there's just a ton of carbon. Alright, here's the other valve that came out of there. You can see that's pretty dirty as well. Lots of carbon build up on that. So we'll clean that up. And there's the valve seat right there from it. Right there. So those aren't too bad, but you can see all the carbon build up in there. Isn't the greatest. So we'll get all that stuff cleaned up. Alright, we got the valves cleaned up. You can see. No more carbon on them. We are going to lap in these valves next. We put a little valve grinding compound on here. We're going to stick the valve in there. And then just very lightly grind these. They don't need much. Alright, that rings all the way around. Looking good. Wipe that off really well. And then we'll do the next one. Now you can see the nice shiny ring around there, that's where we lapped in the valve. Alright, we got out the old valve seals right here. Looking pretty bad. We've got some brand new ones right here. What are we gonna put in? Just gonna oil those up a little bit. Just a tad of oil. Just so that they go on easier. And seal a little bit better. Now we're going to try to push those on, get them fit up here. These are kind of hard to fit on here. Alright, those are good to go. Alright, valves are looking good, all back in. We're going to get the head gasket prepped, and then we'll get the head on. All right, if you guys remember the torquing sequence for these bolts are, uh, we're gonna torque them 22 foot-pounds, then back them off, then torque them to 14 foot-pounds. We already did the 22, and then we already did the 14, so we're at that step. And now, we wanna mark them with a marker, and then turn them, turn them all 180 degrees from that mark. So we're gonna mark them, and then turn them all 180, doing 90 degree intervals.
And another 90. All right, that's torqued down. And that one just hit 40 foot pounds on that torque. <laughs> so definitely uh, tight enough. All right, I went ahead and put the rest of the quad together. Got the gas sink on, we've got cooling in it. Everything is good to go. Um, I torqued down everything, everything is set. I cleaned up the pipe a little bit. And what else did we do? There's oil in it, oil checked it. And uh, we got the battery hooked up, so let's Try to start this thing up and see if she still smokes. Hopefully, by doing the valves and the brand new piston with the rings, we got rid of the smoking issue. Well, she started up, um, doesn't want to run without the choke on for some reason. The smoke is just coming from the pipe because I cleaned it up with WD-40. But otherwise, uh, I don't see any leaking happening or anything like that, so I think we're good there. Alright, so we uh, re-jetted it. It was backfiring and not idling very well. So I re-jetted it. I think we're running a 52 for the pilot and a 180 for the main. Um, I upped the main from a 165 to a 180 because I first did a 175 and that didn't make a difference and then 180 helped a little bit and then I moved the needle position up um, there's only one notch in the needle unfortunately so I had to kind of shim the needle so I put two spacers underneath the needle to make it a little bit more rich and this is where we're at right now It idles perfectly, but you can hear the backfire. So I'm not really sure what the backfire is coming from. And I've tried all different jetting and nothing's fixing the backfire. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It's almost like we're running lean, but we're not. We got all the plastics on it, seat on it, and uh, that's kind of what it looks like. I still have to take off all the stickers and uh, clean it up a bit, but that's like the final look. Pretty sweet looking. All the plastics are like perfect too, so that so that kind of helps. But yeah, pretty sweet looking quad. If only we could figure out why it's backfiring. This thing would be sweet. All right, we're gonna change this uh, chain out right here. You can see how crappy it is. It's all rusty and 
not looking good. We already got the master link off here. So let's see if we can get this thing off of here. We'll just measure this chain. And then we've got a brand new one right here. That will measure up and then cut it and then reinstall. All right, new chain is installed. We're just gonna tighten up the uh, chain tensioner here. So it looks like there's plenty of slack in the chain. Perfect, so let's tighten it up. There's a couple Allens down here that we just need to tighten. And uh, if you guys don't know how to adjust this chain, basically all you do is you loosen up these Allen bolts down here. I don't know why that bolt's in there, but um, that's just a 12 mil. And then you see the little mark right there. You're just gonna push this thing that way to loosen it, and this way to tighten it. And that's pretty good right there. So then we can just tighten it up. Let's just crank them down. We don't want the chain coming off. Looks like this quad was last registered in 2016, so it's definitely been a while. We're gonna get that sticker off, all these stickers off, and the front sticker off here. All right, here it is with all the stickers off of it, looking pretty good. And then I went over the plastics with some brake cleaner to get off all the excess sticker. So you couldn't tell where the stickers were. But yeah, that's the finished product of it. I think that turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? Pretty sweet. I think what it might do is paint these um, blue tones black maybe. I don't know why they painted it blue. Same with down there. Just kind of looks crappy to me. All right, this is the battery we're using. You can see it's 12 volt, 6.5 amp hours, and then 85 cold cranking amps, which is not a lot for cold cranking amps, but that's the battery they recommended. Kind of tight fit. All right, brand new battery, and let's see if it turns over. Alright, made her out here. Going to attempt the first ride. See how she holds up. We still have to break her in because we've got the new piston and rings, so we'll take her easy for the first little bit and then we'll go hard on her. See if she breaks. We'll test out everything today, see if the fan works. 
um, see if any coolant leaks, um, see if it overheats or anything like that. So, should be exciting. Stay Go walk around. Right, here we go first test drive on this thing I think I've had it like two weeks now since uh, I got it back home so this is the first ride in two weeks since owning it we'll probably let her warm up with the choke on a little bit longer just because I had it off when I was getting my GoPro on battery seems a little weak probably just needs to be charged up hopefully it's charging right now pretty easy for the first little bit because we're still breaking her in here So good. Ah, oh, it's leaking coolant. You can see it's leaking coolant right there. It's got an oil leak too. Where the heck is it leaking oil from? Oh, I think it's leaking oil out of that thing. Gasket must be bad or something. Oh, coolant leak stopped. I don't know why it was leaking. Alright, we're gonna let her cool off. I guess that was the first braking ride. You can see a little pool of coolant right there, but it's not leaking anymore. And a couple drops of oil. So, I'm thinking either the drain plug right there, it looks like, or the gasket that's right there on the oil line. And those are really prone to leaking. Let's just see underneath here. 
Yeah, that's probably where it is. So we'll have to fix that yet, but uh, this is just the break-in testing period on this thing. We don't know what will go wrong with it. So that's why you test her out. So, so far so good. I mean, it's got a little bit of a leak. I don't know why the coolant would be leaking right there. That's the overflow. So that means it made it past the first seal, which is not good. Huh, I wonder why that would happen. I even changed the little uh, rod that goes onto the impeller because um, everyone in the comments said it was bent, but it didn't look bent. But I changed it out with another one I had, and I guess we're having a leaking problem now. But yeah, we'll wait five minutes and then uh, start this thing back up again and then do another break and ride. backfiring uh, when you're riding. See if she's leaking anything. Little backfire on uh, deceleration there. So she stay idling. She stays idling. We're not leaking coolant. Leaking out the back here. The overflow doesn't look like it. Well, that's good. Everything's looking good, no more leaking. Maybe it was just residual coolant in the line or something because it wasn't much. Let's see how the oil's looking. Hopefully, it's not super white. If it is, that's definitely that seal. Again, I don't know why it would be. No, it just looks like normal oil. Clear to me. All right, we're gonna go a little bit harder this time and uh, gradually work our way up to like full throttle. So let's see what happens here. Need to choke a little bit because it's probably cold now. So I'm pretty happy so far. The piss is holding up so far, so everything looks good. Chains, chains good to go. Brakes are working. Lights work. 
so everything works 